The first topic for the session will be covering is various methods of capital budgeting. In this session, we'll be covering as various methods. We'll be seeing what are the various methods all about. Now, you're saying capital budgeting is just an investment appraisal exercise. And for investment appraisal exercise, we need two things into account. One is cash inflows and another are the cash outflows. So whatever method you consider, keep in mind that cash inflows and cash flow outflows are to be taken into consideration. Now, cash inflows are the profits which are earned when you start an investment and outflow is the money which goes out. So taking into account these inflows and outflows, we'll be starting us with the various methods of capital budgeting. We'll be covering two methods, traditional methods and the modern methods. Now, traditional methods are primitive methods of capital budgeting which are not practically used today. But they have been developed over a period of time and we'll see how actually the investment appraisal was actually evolved over a period of time. In traditional methods, we'll be covering is payback period method, discounted payback period method and accounting rate of return. Then we'll move on just to modern methods of capital budgeting. Modern methods of capital budgeting are also called as discounted methods. And why do we call them discounted method? Because we use as present value tables for them. So in discounted methods we'll be covering as methods like net present value, internal rate of return and profitability index. So we'll divide this capital budgeting topic into two parts. We'll be covering first as traditional methods and then we'll go ahead and we'll see modern methods of capital budgeting. And this is what your unit is all about. By summarizing this unit at the end, we'll be seeing how we conduct risk analysis for capital budgeting. Something extra will put in for capital budgeting methods. Now, modern methods are the methods which are widely used today. And when you'll see, start solving the problems together, you'll get to know why they're practically so viable. Now, these discounted methods of capital budgeting use something called as time value of money. So, what is time value of money we'll be seeing now? Because when we'll start up discounting methods in the other sessions to come about, you should know what is time value of money and how do we use it. The time value of money means that money in hand is more important than the money which you get tomorrow. For every person, money in hand is more important. For example, if I tell you, you need $1,000 in two years, right? Now, you need $1,000 in two years. For example, now you should start saving today. For example, you say you need 1,000 rupees in two years. Now you should start saving today so that you, you get 1,000 rupees at the end of two years. Now, what do we do? We try to find out what is the value of money today. So you should start saving today. You get 1,000 rupees after two years. For example, many of you would like you'll start your own business after you finish your post-graduation. Now, you may be thinking, okay, I'll need 10 lakh to start a business. Okay, let's just start saving today. Now how much you should start saving today so that you get 10 lakh after 2 years or 10 lakh after your post graduation. So we all are concerned to find out the present value of money and in modern methods we use this technique of present value of money because we are sitting today in a base year in a zero year when investment has not happened yet and you are seeing long term point of view. 2 years down the line, 3 years down the line when you make an investment what returns you will get as such. That's why we see, calculate present value of money. Now, there are two ways to find present value of money. Either you can use a formula. You must have studied in mathem mathematics what is present value. Future value divided by 1 plus rate of interest to the power n. Right? Or we can give you present value tables also. Anyway, which is easy for you to go ahead and solve, use that method. This illustration I'll show you by both the methods. How you can use a formula and do it and how you can use a table for it. We'll also tell you how tables are made. Right? So you should get to know how finance is actually done in short. For example, if I see $1,000 in two years and I tell you discounting rate is 7% compounded annually. If you use a formula, what it will be? Future value is 1000 Interest rate is 7%. Two years, you need the number of years is 2. So if you solve this equation, you see you should start depositing today how much? 873.44. Dollars, so they get thousand dollars after two years, right? Keeping in account the number of time you have and the rate of interest. This is one way to do it. Or the other way is you can use a present value table as you see. Now these tables are always made for one rupee, right? So and whatever amounts you have, you can directly multiply. So if you're using tables, what do you use? You use future value multiply by present value interest factor. Now these tables are always made for one rupee. That's why if you see zero year is not there in the table. Why? Because value of one rupee will be what? One rupee only? If I ask you how much is the value of one rupee today? You'll say one rupee is one rupee. That's why zero year one rupee one is the only present value whatever the percentage they give you. 
so you have the percentage and you have the number of years in columns you can find out as the various years and rows you can find out as the percentage now for example if i say now how these tables are made let us look into account what the formula for present value future value divide by 1 divide by 1 plus r now if i do for example 7 percent you have a calculator you do 1 divide by 1 plus 7 percent when i say 7 percent it's 7 divide by 100 so 7 divide by 100 how much you get 0 0.07 so if you do 1 divide by 1.07 how much you get you get 0 0.935 press equal to sign again you'll get for the second year that is 0 0.873 start keep on pressing equal to sign you get the present value factor for all the years take any percentage for example if i give you 10 percent now what will you do 1 divide by 1.1 Keeping in account the present value formula, rate of interest is 10 for one year will be to the power 1. So 1 divided by 1.1, how much you get? 0 0.909. Press equal to sign again, how much you get? 0 0.826. Press equal to sign again and get the present value factors for all the years. Now, this is how tables are made. They make our work simplify because if I tell you 20 years down the line, 25 years down the line, using a calculator will be a cumbersome activity. Now, for example, in this illustration, we have 7% for 2 years. Let us find the present value factor. 7% for 2 years, you can see is 0.873. Now, this is for 1 rupee. For what amount do I want? I want for $1,000. So, directly as I said just now, when you're using a table, present value is equal to what? Future value into present value interest factor. So, 1000 into 0.873 which gives you $873. It is the present value of money. Now, whether you use a formula, whether you use a table, you'll see you'll get the same answer at the end. Time value of money you just need is when you start with the discounting methods of capital budgeting or the modern methods. Traditional methods don't use much except discounted payback period method. But you'll see NPV, IRR and profitability index will be more focused on these time value of money concept. And you should know the present value of money. For example, if you're making investment today, you'll say you get profit 1000 rupees after one year, 2000 rupees after one year. You'll be like fine, one year, two year down the line is understood. But what is the value of money today? And that's why present value tables are used. When we start working out methods, we'll try to see then how these methods are practically used. How we practically use this present value table in various methods.